One interesting theorem that you've probably come across uh, while working with polynomials is the complex zeros theorem. Now this is a really interesting theorem that talks about uh, possible zeros that your polynomial could have when they are complex. Let's take a look at the theorem, see what it says. According to the complex zeros theorem, if your uh, function f is a polynomial and all of its coefficients of real, and it has a plus bi as a zero, then a minus bi is also a zero. Now sometimes when people read this theorem, they're, they're not really sure what information they're getting out of this. But what I tell people uh, when they're reading this is the following. Complex zeros come in pairs. So if I know that, say, uh, 5 plus 6i is one of my zeros, according to this theorem, then 5 minus 6i the complex conjugate of that one is also a zero. Now you can sometimes see the uh, complex zeros theorem in work in some other theorems. For example, if you look at Descartes' rule of sign, uh, it you know it has a part in there where it says you know the maximum number of zeros is the number of sign changes, or it could be less than that by an even number. And that little part in there where it says less than by an even number, it's taking into account that it could have complex zeros, and since they always come in pairs, it'll go down by two every time. Well, let's use this theorem in a couple of examples so you can see uh, why it's important. The first one that we're going to use it on is for factoring a polynomial. And right now the only thing we know is that 2 plus i is a zero of this polynomial. So normally I'd go through and I'd start testing looking for other zeros, but because of the theorem I actually know a little bit more information. If 2 plus i is a zero, I know that 2 minus i is also a zero. So already I have two zeros of this polynomial, and since it's a third degree, I only have one more left to go. If I wanted to find that last one, uh, I could take these two zeros, turn them into factors, multiply them together, and then divide it out of my polynomial. In fact, let's do that. So these two factors, maybe x minus 2 plus i, x minus 2 minus i, and we'll go ahead and multiply these two together. Let's see, x times x, x squared. Let's see, then I have my outside terms, minus x times a 2 minus i, inside terms, minus x 2 plus i, and my last terms, uh, looks like I have a negative times a negative, so positive 2 plus i, 2 minus i. Alright, combine some things. x squared minus 2x plus uh, ix minus 2x minus ix. Okay, looks good. And let's see, multiply these guys over here plus, let's see, 2 times 2 is 4. Outside terms, minus 2i. Inside terms, plus 2i. Last terms, a minus i squared. Let's see, and a whole bunch more that we can combine. Let's see. x squared minus 4x. Let's see, uh, i minus i, cancel minus 2 plus 2 and since i squared is a negative 1 so I have minus minus 1 or plus 1 let's see so plus 4 plus 1 plus 5 cool alright so by putting these two factors together I can now divide this out uh, from the rest of my polynomial let's use long division to see if we can find that last remaining factor so here I have my original polynomial and the one we just found. So first I have to figure out, all right, what do I need to multiply an x squared by in order to get an x cubed? So I think x will work out just fine. So we'll take x, multiply it through all of these terms. So x times an x squared, x cubed. x times a minus 4x, minus 4x squared. 
and x times a 5 plus 5x. Alright, after we've multiplied through, we'll subtract this guy away. Careful on your signs. x cubed minus x cubed is gone. Minus 7x minus a minus 4x. So this is like adding 4. So you have minus 3x squared. And 17x minus 5x plus 12x. And let's bring down this 15. Okay, now I have to figure out what do I need to multiply an x squared by in order to get a negative 3x squared. So, a minus 3. Now we'll multiply that through, see what happens. So, minus 3 times an x squared, minus 3x squared, minus 3 times a negative 4, plus 12x, m minus 3 times a positive 5, minus 15. Look at that, it's matching up great. Which means when we subtract it away, goes in there evenly, and there's no remainder. Which there shouldn't be a remainder, uh, considering that this polynomial is made up of two factors uh, that I was given in the problem that are zeros. Let's go ahead and finish this problem off just by listing out the factors and the corresponding zeros. So my factors, I have an x minus, a 2 plus i, x minus, 2 minus i, so those are my two complex, and we just found another one, x minus 3. Each of these corresponds to our zeros, so we have zeros of 2 plus i, there's our first complex zero, according to our complex zeros theorem, here's its conjugate, 2 minus i, and we just found one more zero at 3. Awesome. Now let's go ahead and use the complex zeros theorem in one more example, uh, just so you have a better idea on where you can use it. For this last example, we want to find a polynomial of the smallest degree having only real coefficients with zeros of 2 and 5 minus i. Now since we're building a polynomial with uh, real coefficients, I know that one of the zeros is complex, 5 minus i, because of that theorem, we also know that it must have another zero at its conjugate, 5 plus i. So I know that it uh, looks like these will be all of my zeros. I'll take each of them and turn them into a factor. So like x minus 2 would be the factor of that one. Uh, x minus 5 minus i is uh, another factor and x minus 5 plus i. Cool. So now I'll go through and just multiply everything together. I find it easiest to uh, actually start with the ones that involve the complex numbers, then we'll work in the x minus 2. So let's see, x times x, I have an x squared. My outside terms will be a minus x uh, and a 5 plus i. Inside terms, minus x, 5 minus i. My last terms looks like a negative times a negative, so positive. Then 5 minus i, 5 plus i. All right. Let's see, a few more things that we can combine in here. x squared minus a 5x minus an ix, then I have minus 5x plus ix, and now I can FOIL these guys out. Plus 5 times 5 is 25, outside would be plus 5i, inside minus 5i, and my last terms a minus i squared. A lot of terms in there. Let's see. Well, I have a minus ix and a positive ix. Those are gone. Positive 5i, minus 5i. Those are gone. And now I'll just combine the remaining. So x squared minus 10x. And let's see. I have 25 minus an i squared. 
that i squared again becomes a negative 1, so minus, a minus 1 is plus 1, so plus 26. All right, almost to my polynomial. Now I want to take these two and multiply them together. We can do that by taking the first term, multiplying it by all of them, and taking the second term and multiplying by all of them. So let's start with the x. x times x squared is x cubed. x times a 10x will give me a 10x squared. And x times a 26, 26x. All right, now the negative 2. Negative 2x squared. Negative 2 times a negative 10 plus a 20x, and negative 2 times a 26, negative 52. All right, so it looks like we're down to our polynomial. Just have to list out all the terms. So I have an x cubed, and I can combine my squareds, minus 12 x squared. We'll combine our x's, plus 46x, and minus 52. So this is the uh, polynomial of least degree. It only has real coefficients. And since I built it uh, from the zeros of 2, 5 minus i, and 5 plus i, it has all of the proper zeros. So just like that, you can use the complex uh, zeros theorem to figure out some more zeros uh, in your polynomials. If you'd like to see some more videos, please watch mysecretmathtutor.com.